everyone. Dr. Chaya Nair welcomes you to Teenage Talks. I'm very happy that most of you listened to my previous episode and has given me good feedback. In fact, many parents who listened to the previous podcast already started talking to their children about sex and sexuality, and it is a welcoming sign. Today's episode is Youth Perspective on Sex and Sexuality Education, and I have with me three amazing youngsters who are ready to talk about it. Disha? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Disha, and I've recently completed my undergraduate studies uh, in uh, media and communication from Manipal Institute of Communication, and will start working soon. Tanya? Hi, my name is Tanya. I graduated from Mount Carmel College with an undergrad in the same as Disha, mass communication. And right now I'm working as a copywriter for a marketing agency. And Varun? Uh, hello everyone, I'm Varun Diani, based out of Lugiana, Punjab, and currently final year of uh, B.Tech in electronics and communication. I welcome all of you. Are you all excited to be on the show? Yes, yes. ma'am. What do you all think about sex and sexuality education? Is it absolutely necessary? And if so, how is it helpful to the youth? Disha? Yes, ma'am. So I would like to talk about how the lack of sex education is dangerous, which will try and uh, explain the importance of sex education. In a lot of places, sexual education is actually the difference between life and death for millions of girls around the world. We live in a world that is decimated by gender-based uh, violence. And this problem is actually very cyclical and it starts young. Boys grow up seeing their fathers treating women and grow up to perpetrate that. And women grow up experiencing abuse. And many never realize that this is not how things are supposed to be done. And they are supposed to be treated differently. For example, even in progressive countries like Canada, over 50% of women are unable to actually define the word consent. So I believe sex education is very important in this case as it helps teenagers and adolescents make informed choices. And without that, they would not be able to carry anything forward in their lives in general. What about you, Varun? Agree with Disha. Sex education is absolutely important. Other way around would be that children resort to unsafe ways of killing their curiosity. They'll refer to pornography, they'll refer to the internet, and they're exposed to different types of materials which are not made for them. And it isn't technically or knowledgeably correct. So the advantages of sex education would be they'll indulge in safer sex and consensual sex practices. There wouldn't be any unwanted pregnancies. There would be no sexual abuse. Or if there is one, then there's disclosure towards it. Coming towards sexuality, people would accept the change. People would accept themselves. Hence, uh, healthy gender identity and body positivity would be a great plus to it. So I believe it's really important for people to get educated in it. What do you think, Tanya? I agree with uh, what Disha and Varun said. And just in general, I feel like it's essential for young children, adolescents alike, to have a comprehensive understanding of this world. And does it teach you any other skills? It helps us to accept change, man. whatever our body undergoes, whatever the society is undergoing, whatever people around us are undergoing. So it helps us to understand and realize that all the things they're going through are completely normal and they are not supposed to be secluded from society and that we should be more inclusive. Does it teach you communication skills, assertiveness and also your capacity to say no? You, do you think so? It, it does, does ma'am. Of course it, it does. Yes, it, it does. Okay. Actually, some of the teens I've spoken to, they said that teaching them about sex and sexuality it will make them feel that it is normal. It's a normal phenomenon. There's nothing so much, you know, it's not a taboo. So it's a good thing, actually. Uh, that way they feel it, they are comfortable with uh, sex and sexuality education. But there are teachers, parents, and other adults, and some religious bodies who are against it. So what do you have to say about it? Disha? Ma'am, I just have to say that... Uh... Kids who have an open and honest conversation or teenagers, at the end of the day, all it's better for the society 
and there will be a reduced number of violence based on all of this because people will know what is to be done and what isn't so i understand that a lot of um, uh, parents or religious bodies feel it's bad because one reason i might feel that is ignorance they don't see that there are a lot of consequences that is being faced because of lack of sexual education it plays a very important role in shaping any person's life but is still considered a major taboo maybe because uh, a lot of parents and religious bodies think that by talking you will put the idea of sex as a whole in the heads of teenage minds but if they talk about it we're going to think that they're condoning it and they really worry about this point but contrary to this three decades of robust social science research tells us that the more the parents and teachers talk to kids and adolescents the better we do and the more delayed our actions are towards sex and other practices and it's more safe so i don't see any reason why religious bodies or parents are shying away from it rather they should confront it and talk about it antanya who do you think should start teaching children about sex and sexuality i think it's more appropriate if somebody who's more educated about the topic without any biases is imparting this knowledge to younger children but i think at some level discussions can start happening at home from the parents uh, especially when the children are really young because i feel like navigating the world just in general is really confusing and young children should at least have the understanding of what good touch and bad touch is and this can come from the parents and later the more nuanced stuff as they grow up age appropriate education can be provided with a properly established curriculum in schools where someone who's more educated about the topics can teach the children accordingly but some schools say that it is a parents responsibility to teach children about sex and sexuality and the schools cannot do it because in a classroom setup there are many children who may not be ready for it and they may have wrong ideas and wrong impressions about it what do you say varun ma'am i believe uh, education at school would dispel myths misconceptions and misinformation even if there are different types of students there is diversity it will help in the inclusiveness and you know accepting whatever it is because it is it is what it is so i am very objective about it that all the technical knowledge all the awareness should start from school in a particular in an organized manner so that everyone is imparted the same knowledge then they should be reinforced by the parents from the values and beliefs so you feel it's more of a teachers responsibility to teach you all sex education rather than the parents um if we want it to be uniform and available to everybody it has to be done from the school parents they'll have their own values their own biases their own beliefs the technical information which is scientific if that information comes from my home they can biases towards it so those scientific information comes from school only the reinforcement part or the part where relationship relationship stuff comes in or soft skill uh, comes into play that part is supposed to be taken care of by parents but disha many studies have proved that you know it should be started at home parents should start teaching them from the um, age of 4 or 5 the consent and then you know it will go on like that and of course the schools can teachers can you know reinforce what they have learned at home yes ma'am i do agree with you it should be started at home one major reason is because from a young age if it started to be talked about children will think it's normal and that it's not weird so it normalizes talking about sex uh, secondly like varun and tanya mentioned it does increase confidence when parents teach their kids about sex ed the main area in which they can contribute like varun mentioned is values and beliefs so i believe instead of parents being more important or schools being more important both are equally important because both cater to different segments of sexual education they say that sex education curriculum cannot just be introduced in the schools like that you have to take into consideration many things like cultural values and what concerns youth and concerns of the parents concerns of the society as a whole all these things to be considered before you introduce sex education into the curriculum what do you say with tanya is it possible in a diverse country like this with so many people having different ideas about sex education 
to take everybody's values and ideas and then make a curriculum ideally i think there should be a standardized curriculum across all schools but i understand that because there's such diversity of opinion and culture in a country like ours that can be difficult and initially it's going to be hard to push and introduce but regardless it should start at a micro level at least it doesn't have to start in a full fledged sense maybe the curriculum can be introduced into schools more step by step it has to be handled tactfully because all of a sudden there have been years on different batches including ours that did not have comprehensive sex ed and then suddenly next year if it's fully established that might be a transition that is too heavy to take on what do you think that the teachers would like to teach their students about sex and sexuality no ma'am as of now i do not think teachers would prefer to teach about sex and sexuality they have their own personal beliefs which make them hesitant but comprehensive training teacher training their professional development and giving them a thumbs up that this is the way to go teachers would want to give the knowledge no, but as I- of now they won't like to actually in 2005 ministry of human resources has uh, introduced the sex education into the schools but many states banned it including karnataka then how do you go about it tanya if it's too much of a problem introducing it to children in a classroom setting right away maybe sex education can be made a part of the bed curriculum for teachers so that it becomes more normalized for teachers to talk about it and maybe people won't have too much of a problem since it's a professional degree and the target audience here is in children so maybe there'll be less of a pushback if this is the first step taken rather than going ahead with sex education directly in the classroom setting yeah it's a good idea to introduce into bed curriculum maybe at least the teachers you know know what to teach and what not to teach to the students and they may be comfortable mm-hmm. also having gone through that course they may be comfortable disha if you are yeah. asked to teach in your community sex and sexuality to children will you be able to do it uh, yes ma'am definitely i obviously can't say that uh, i know everything about uh, sex education but i would also say that me not teaching or conveying across what i know to a community that would only benefit from it would be wrong so whatever i know in whatever way is definitely a start to start anything at a very large scale it takes time so why not start in your own place by your own little ways so i would definitely teach uh, whatever i know to any community that needs it and requires it what about you varun definitely ma'am who is the need of the hour? so tanya apart from parents and teachers some outsiders like doctors and counselors will be able to do a better job a lot of schools have relied on counselors in the past i feel like seeking help from them is appropriate because they have the knowledge when it comes to dealing with sensitive issues or just any complex emotions disha there are so many myths about homosexuality parents still don't accept it their children are homosexual what are your views on homosexuality ma'am my views are uh, basically that homosexuality is a very natural natural and valid variation of human sexuality like any other form of sexuality taking heterosexuality also into consideration just like heterosexuality there's also homosexuality and there is nothing wrong with it it refers to for those of you who don't know romantic sexual or emotional attraction between individuals of the same sex so i do believe that if the concept of comprehensive sex education is brought to the table many people will get aware of different types of sexuality also which is really important as people who are not heterosexual and are of different sexualities will feel accepted and they'll also feel like okay this is normal and i'm not somebody who's not normal tanya many people say that homosexual people look weird do you think so i don't think so at all 
I think it's more of a conditioning that people have. Maybe they get it from what they've heard growing up or what they've seen their friends say. Having a comprehensive sex education system is important because that way empathy increases when people uh, are educated about how different sexual orientations can manifest and how there's nothing wrong with that at all. Varun, supposing one of your family members, say maybe your brother or someone is a, a homosexual person, a gay, will you accept yes, easily or you find it difficult to accept? I believe five years younger Varun wouldn't have accepted or would have found it very inappropriate or very weird. But now it's so common and I would I would believe inclusivity, respect and equality is the go, is for everybody regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. So there's no point. I mean, it is what it is. So I just cannot help it and I will have to accept it. So all these are easy to say, but how difficult it is, uh, Disha, to accept for the parents and the siblings and all that. Yeah, ma'am. I do agree it's extremely difficult to accept because uh, stressing on the word that Tanya mentioned before, we're all conditioned to think a certain way. Having said that, it also has to start somewhere. However difficult things are, we have to make the move because uh, only if we start, can it be easier for the coming generations and for our parents to understand that there are other things also apart from one certain things. So how can the youth bring about a change in the societal attitude towards sex education, Tanya? I think it can be as simple as just having more conversations about it and not shying away from it. And then maybe we can consider starting our own youth groups, but that's a little ambitious. For now, what we're doing in and of itself is a tiny step. And I think it's essential. We should continue having these conversations with our friends and not shy away from it. Call out behavior that might not be helpful to anybody and hold our friends accountable if they're spreading any misinformation that might increase shame and fear towards such topics. How do you see the future of sex education in India? It isn't very promising now. The future mm-hmm. of sex education because nobody is talking about it. Nobody is very much into it or it isn't con- considered a major topic or an issue. But don't you think compared to the previous generations, people have already started talking about sex and sexuality? Uh, Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they have. Like compared to before, it's increased to a very large extent. And coming back to, you know, what Tanya was saying and how youth can bring a change in societal attitude. I do agree you have to start talking about it, uh, even though it's uncomfortable. There's a famous saying that goes, if you want a hard life, have easy conversations. And if you want an easy life, have hard conversations. So we need to start these conversations. And apart from that, we have to acknowledge the importance of social media. It can bring about a huge change that we're all seeing that people are taking on to social media now. A very small example, in the 60s, over 40% of Americans used to smoke. But uh, having created awareness through social media and people talking about it in 2018, that literally reduced to 14%. Tanya, what is your message to parents, teachers and other adults as the future leaders of 21st century? I think our parents and uh, other generations as well shouldn't shy away from these conversations if I were to give a message to them. Clearly, there have been so many studies that have proven that Uh, Knowing versus not knowing about uh, sex education has its own repercussions. It's all out there. The data is there. So why not start having these conversations and move the veil of mystery that surrounds the topic? Yeah, that's really good. So in a nutshell, you all will say that it will help you to differentiate between appropriate and inappropriate information because most of the children these days get inappropriate information from the media, from internet and uh, other social media and places like that. And you feel it is better the children know about consent and all other practices like so that they can avoid all 
unwanted pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases and all that. And you feel that it will make you more confident in dealing with these uh, things and sexual abuse can be reduced. Maybe you'll become more assertive. It will improve your communication skills and you will learn how to say no. And when people start talking about it since the, your childhood, you feel it is normal. It is not no longer a taboo and you will feel more comfortable with it. Okay, thank you all very much. And it has been a very interesting session. I am very sure that uh, all the youngsters and even the parents and the other adults who listen to you will understand what the youth of today feels. And thank you very much for participating in this uh, discussion. And to the listeners, thank you all for listening to this session. Please share it with your friends, your family members and others who are interested in this uh, topic. Thank you very much once again. I'll meet you in my next episode.